morning, Suzuki community. It's Myron in Chile, Arizona this morning. Got a little snow in the mountains around here. I love the Birdie Valley. If you ever get a chance, come out and wheel with us out here. Today we're going to be talking about front bumpers for Suzuki and Geo trackers and sidekicks and the guitars later on in the video. So every jig that we're going to be working on today is going to have a banner to explain to you how you do what we want you to do so that we have really strong front bumpers on these cars. First I'd like to point out that this is the two-door 1989 to 1995 and this bracket's going to fit on all of the cars. You'll notice the steel picture here. It's going to show the two bolts on the side, kind of a dead giveaway that this is this particular jig in your particular car. What I want you to know is that these little bolts is what held the bumper on before. Now they're just going to be to use our brackets to weld the brackets onto the frame. It's really important that you weld wherever you can to get this bracket part of the frame. Then our bumpers are going to bolt on. And the way that our bumpers bolt on is we use a hatchet plate, I call it a hatchet plate, and this is going to be welded inside the shell. And then as you see it has a series of holes here. And the reason why I did this is because there's a lot of people that slam these. And so we want to go down, we can go down. We want to go up because we raise the body. I have these in one inch increments. And this is why our bumpers are so popular because I'm the only one that will adjust up and down for body lifts so you don't have those ugly gaps. And so I'm going to go ahead and bolt this guy on and I'm going to put a bumper on. Now remember, when your bumper arrives, it's going to have this hatchet plate welded inside the shell. Your job is to bolt this on, put the bumper up there to make sure that everything's okay, and you're always going to get nut strips, which the nuts are welded on here so it's a lot easier to bolt on. And it's simply what you're going to do is you're going to put the bumpers here, you're going to bolt it on like that, and one thing I do want to let you know, if you get one of our winch bumpers, the winch has to go in before you put the bumper up. It has to have a remote controller that can be moved because I want my bumpers close. I want the best approach angle I can get. So my bumpers are not out 18 inches like other people. I like folded bumpers. I don't like two bumpers. Folded steel is a lot stronger when you're out there banging around in the rocks and the trees and hitting down when you go into a gully and you land on your front bumper. That'll bend a tube bumper. So I do tube work on the top of the bumper, but all my bumpers are folded on a 100-ton double ram press down in Phoenix. And so I'm going to go ahead and bolt this on. Give me a minute. And then we're going to put the bumper on so you can see what it looks like. This is one of our wrench bumpers. We also have non-wrench bumpers, and we also have solid face ends. This is what I call a light tunnel. This tunnel's not welded in yet, because as you can see, I haven't got the hatchets welded in. I do the light tunnels last. So this is our wrench bumper. It looks like this on all of the models. I don't have a non-wrench to show you, but they're on the website. So that's it for the 1989. Now there is one more thing I want to talk about real quick. This is what I call an aero tab. This is going to be welded in this spot right here and it's for a quick release shackle. If you were going to tow your car, I don't put those in. I weld this all up and it's a nice smooth face and I put the tow brackets right here. And that's how I do it to tow these. I've made about four or five hundred of these as tow systems. They tow really well. Notice that my face slants back for more clearance. Anyways, that's it for the 1989 to 1995 two-door Tractors Suzuki Sidekick. Let's go to the next one. We're going to start now with the four-door. 
The four door is kind of unique in that it has a bolt at the top of the frame and it has a moss on the side here with the frame. You can see in the still pictures. So this jig, the red jig, covers 1989 to 1995 four door Suzuki Sidekick Geotractor. Look at the banner, it's going to tell you what it is. And again, we do not want to rely on the small 8mm bolts that held your styrofoam bumper on to hold the bumper you're going to wrench off of. So when we send you these brackets, we want you to weld wherever you can where it's not going to be in the way of the, the nut plates that go inside here. So we don't provide this, but you're going to come up with little pieces of steel and you're going to put them in here and you're going to weld to the frame and you're going to make this as strong as you can because you don't want to be towing or wenching with these four small little bolts. I'm going to go ahead and put this hatchet plate on and remind you again that these hatchet plates are going to be fully welded into the bumper shell so your job is to weld on the brackets and then trial fit before you fully weld. That's a good idea. Bolt it on then trial fit it because I do gap these just a little bit to make sure they go on smooth for you. So I'm going to go ahead and put this hatchet plate on and we're going to hang this winch bumper. Each one of the bolts that we provide you is going to have 10,000 pounds of shear. So if you do the minimum, which is six bolts, that's 60,000 pounds it would take to rip the bumper off. That's why we've got to weld it to the frame, and I'm talking about the frame brackets. All right, let me put that bumper up there. What I do when I weld the hatchet plates in is I get the bumper centered. You don't have to worry about that. You're going to weld the two brackets on each side of the frame. You're going to trial fit it before you weld it. Then you're going to bolt on the front bumper. And remember, some of these models, I've got two rows of bolt patterns. You might ask why. Because if you have an AC condenser, we will have to move it out to the farthest hole. So if you don't have AC, we can bring it back that inch and a half that the condenser is missing right here and then you can get it closer to the frame. Whatever you do, don't cut the grill. Get your remote controller off to the side, put it in the engine compartment. I don't like it when you have to cut the grill. That's not necessary. So this again is your four door and this is my uh, wench bumper called the Dominator. I, Named it that because I dominate the bumper business on these cars. And so uh, we're going to move on now to the later model, the cars, the uh, Grand Vitars, and the trackers and the Grand Trackers from 1999 to 2004. I don't make bumpers after 2004. All right, let's go on to the next jig. Now we're going to be dealing with the trackers, the Grand Trackers, the Vitaras and the Grand Vitaras. These start in 1999, they have much wider frames, so my bumper is quite a bit wider so that that tail matches the fender. I had to invent a really cool bracket, it's an interlocking bracket, so when you get the bumper, this is what you're going to be welding on. It is got two, It has two slits right here, and the idea is to break this into pieces because it's going to interlock. Now if you pay attention, this bracket here was my prototype, so it's a little bit different, but the dimension is extremely important because you're going to be welding these on. Before you put the bumper on, I need you to measure from the inside of the hatchet plate to the inside of the hatchet plate and make sure that you weld this bracket on. And again, this is a three-piece bracket. So look at the pictures, you'll get an idea of how it goes in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the hatchet plate on. The hatchet plate is going to be welded into your bumper. And so I'm going to put that on now and hang this big winch bumper. Then the bumper will come with the nut plate to make it a lot easier. Again, 
we're using grade A, 3A, 16, 10,000 pound shear bolts. The minimum is three on each side. If you can get four in, put them in. And again, when I weld in the hatchet plates, I'm gonna center the bumper to your car. You're gonna have a little bit of back and forth movement, but not very much. This is our solid face end that has no light tunnel, so that is an option. Uh, this one actually is not going to get aero tabs. I haven't welded up the holes yet because this customer is going to get toe brackets right here. Again, any of your winches that you get, in fact, I'll tell you my favorite, Smitty Built XRC 9500 from Amazon, really hard to beat that price. It does have a detachable remote controller, so you can move it off to the side or you can put it in the uh, engine compartment if you like. That's where I like to keep them out of the rain. So this is our jig. Well, this is all of our jigs. And now I'm going to bring over one more jig and talk to you about the oddball year, 1996. So give me a minute for that and we will now show you the blue jig. As always, I'd like to thank the Suzuki community for the years of support. We're going on our 20th year here pretty soon. And I sure appreciate all the calls I get, all the letters I get. Uh, I really like what I do. I love what I do. And I am very happy that I did this. Uh, I have regrets sometimes when business is tough. But I wanted to show you how I make bumpers. And one of the things you didn't see is that these were all cars originally, and I put them up on wheels, and they're only two feet. So on the same jig, I built the, the rear bumpers also. So this is a rear bumper with a tire carrier to be shipping to there tomorrow. And uh, I wanted to talk to you about an odd year. Suzuki had a bad time in 1996, and they were literally throwing cars together. So if you own a 1996, it could have a 95 or a 97 frame. I won't know. So if you tell me that you have a 96, this is what I'm going to be asking you. Does it have a square boss here or a round boss? If it's a square boss, this is a 97 frame. It came out in 1996, but again, Suzuki has 1996 vehicles that still have the 95 frame. So it's really important that we match the bracket that you're going to be using because it's a pain in the ass to build a bumper for you and you have the year wrong. So I want to make sure it always fits because I've made maybe about 600 of these front and rear bumpers so far. And I have once got the wrong information from somebody, had to ship the bumper back, I sold it to somebody else, because you know, once they're made, they're made, they're not gonna chop it up into pieces and make it fit your frame. So it is really important to me. Now, what happens if you sell the car? Unbolt the bumper. Have that guy buy the bumper for me, and I will sell you the bracket so that you can do it on another car. It's just gotta be the same style. See, if you go from a 1999 to a 1993, leave the bumper on the car because it's not going to fit. Give me a call if you have any questions. Thanks again for using 4x4 and Zoot's Off-Road products. We sure appreciate you guys. And a little hint, you might see this in time. This might be the first year I go to King of the Hammers. Some, some of my friends are trying to talk me into it and I'm thinking about it. So if I'm there, you'll see some pictures and whatnot. And I have some uh, old time friends that I haven't seen for a long time to go there and race. So I want to, I'm going to see a few people like Josh Pat. Uh, we've, we've helped Josh in the past with sponsorships and things. So we do like Josh. Uh, he's the only guy I know that will get 18 at the casino here playing blackjack and still win. So again, thank you very much, everybody. Always good to talk to you. Give me a phone, call if you need any tech support. Sorry, I'm not